Hey, Roxy. Hey, Brenda. Is this your show for kids? No. Does this show have spoilers? Yes. Welcome to Nerd Love. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> about rainbows and what's on the other side rainbows are visions but only illusions and rainbows have nothing to hide so we've been told and some choose to believe it and I know the wrong way and see Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. I know that it's probably magic. Have you been half asleep? And have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name. Is this the sweet sound that calls on young sailors? The voice might be one and the same. I've heard it too many times to ignore it. It's something I'm supposed to be. Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. La da da di da da do. La di da 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 do. Yeah, we killed that shit, son. Welcome, Welcome to Nerd Love. Love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Roxy Hayes. I'm Brenda Valdivia. This is Fuck a yeah. host full episode. Yep. We don't have a guest today because he decided to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> he has a job and responsibilities. <laughs> 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 but today we're going to talk about one of the most rewatchable shows ever created in the history of ever. It is The Office. I fucking love The Office. I know. It's such a good show. It is one of the best shows. It has nine seasons. I think 159. I don't fucking know the number. Yeah. A lot of fucking episodes. It's got a ton of episodes uh, fun fact i get too nervous watching it it is a very cringe worthy show like yeah. that's that's one of the appeals of the show is just how much it makes you cringe it's really awkward most of the characters are awkward it's just such a fucking great show i yeah. love it what uh well first i want to start off with saying my favorite episodes like mm -hmm. these are my i made a list very difficult i had to break it down to one two three six my top six Ooh. favorite episodes and God damn it, wait, I got to add one. I lied. My favorite <laughs> top seven favorite episodes. Okay. So I, they're not in any particular order. Uh, first one that I'm going to say is Goodbye, Toby. That was the episode uh, where Holly came, and Holly was the one that ends up marrying Michael. So that was the first time she came. Kobe, uh, Toby was leaving to Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. yeah the yeah, only yeah. reason that he even went to Costa Rica was because there was a very awkward moment between him and Pam where they were laughing, and he put his hand on Pam's knee and everybody just looked because she was dating Jim and then he just like was like I'm going to Costa Rica and jumped a fucking fence and just ran away oh, yeah. so I love the episode because I wish more relationships would end that way <laughs> <laughs> you like, just know it's not going well and so like, it's like yeah, you know what I'm, I'm just going to leave Rica. the country we're, we're yeah. done here yeah. but that was uh, he met Michael met Holly and he didn't like HR because Toby had been with HR and um, so you could tell like she was kind of quirky she's kind of weird and you're like this woman is perfect for for Michael. Uh, and then they also had like, they threw like a huge party for Toby to go away. Mm -hmm. And Jim was going to propose to Pam on that episode, but Andy ended up proposing to Angela. Yeah. Yeah. And so Jim didn't propose the episode. So that was one of my favorite, just cause it showed like the beginning of the Holly and Michael relationship. Um, my next favorite one that's on the list is diversity day. That was season one, episode two. Oh yeah. When he, <laughs> he did that Chris rock joke. Oh my God. 
Just seeing fucking uh, Steve Carell do a Steve Rock, uh, Chris Rock impression is just the funniest shit ever. I, I, I watched uh, the British. See, my deal is that I watched the British office mm-hmm. and I couldn't make it through one episode. Of the British one? Yes. I, I didn't really uh, like Ricky it. Ricky Gervais is such a like polarizing person mm-hmm. that if you don't love him, you can't be in a room him. with yep. him. There's only one show I've ever liked him in, and I can't even remember the name God of the show. Damn. Is it like the Idiot Abroad show or something like that? Yeah, I like... Where he's traveling. I like stuff. that show, but I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like the, the difference between Steve Carell and Ricky Gervais is so... It's completely different. Yes. You can't even... Ricky is so mean. Like he's, he's mean. He's an asshole. He's, he's really a, condescending. He's aware that he's a piece of shit, yeah. but he doubles down on it. And Steve Carell doesn't know. He's just yeah. an idiot. He's just really stupid and lovable. Like, you love him in spite of his ignorance. Yeah. With, with Ricky Gervais, it's just like, you are a fucking asshole. Don't talk to me anymore. That, yeah. That's kind of how I feel. So, like, I think that shit fucked me up because I couldn't watch the British one. I watched the the American version. I can't even watch the British one. Like, a lot of people saying, like, if you watch the British one first, you can still enjoy the, the American one. But if you watch the American one first, you cannot. Yeah. It's really difficult for you to get because it's so, it's completely different type of vibe on the show but uh that's also the episode where kelly slaps michael because he does that indian impression Ugh. he's like do you want my gookie gookie you want my gookie gookie and she just slapped the shit out of him i like that one and that's the first because the first the very first episode is okay you know what i mean but this is the episode where you start to kind of see everybody's personalities yeah. you see michael has no filter you see he's just really fucking stupid yeah the first couple of episodes are just kind of dealing with the feel of the show Mm -hmm. which is pretty common in most shows you know the pilot they're just trying to everybody's just trying to feel the show out Mm -hmm. um people don't really understand what the hell the show is going to be going on uh but yeah i think you're right the diversity episode is where everyone just starts waking up and yeah you start to see everybody's personality. It's no longer about the company itself. It's about, it's about the people in it, which is such a, such a fucking good show. Yeah, It's such a fucking good show. Uh, the next one I have on here is the Casino Night, and that's the episode where Jim finally, like, professes his love to Pam, and they kiss. Aww. It's like the end of, it's the end of season fucking two. It's yeah. The end of season two is the last episode of season two. And she's on the phone with her mom. He had already confessed his love to her, and she's like, you know, oh, we're both drunk. He's like, I'm not drunk. She wasn't drunk. And she was just like, you know, I can't. I'm engaged to Roy. So he left. And you see her talking on the phone with her mom. And then he comes back in and he kisses her. And she kisses him back. And then, like, that's how the season ends is them, like, kissing. And you're like, fucking finally. It's been, like, 50 episodes of that. So that was the one. But then she turned him down. And then that's when he he left. And uh, that's when he ended up dating Karen. Yeah. Who is uh, fucking Rashida Jones. Oh, yeah, she's mm-hmm. crazy hot. Yeah, she's so fucking pretty. Gosh, she's Quincy gorgeous. Jones is, who is, I forgot who her mom is. I just know Quincy Jones is her dad, the fucking yeah. famous the producer. Office, uh, so there's like a lot that happens in American television where even kind of normal, average looking people mm-hmm. on the show, you know, they're supposed to be schlubby or inexplicably hot. Yep. Um, but the office didn't do that. They mm-hmm. like cast people who were really funny and, and who look, look human. Exactly. <laughs> so Jim is cute, but he's not like, he's not like hot. an Adonis. Yeah. And, uh, Pam is really cute, but mm-hmm. she's not like, and I think they, they doled her down too. like yeah. that. You could tell they really like plain ass clothes and mm-hmm. the shirts are bigger than they need to be. Unform fitting. Yeah. Like super cheapy looking kind of, but I, I think that adds to the, like you're saying, the, the realism of the show. Like you feel yeah. like, you know, these people, you feel like you can walk in any office and these mm-hmm. people would be in there. So yeah, that's kind of the wonderful part of the appeal of the show. Um, another one I have on here is the dinner party episode that season four, episode nine, where you see, cause you know, Jan and Michael have this weird ass fucking relationship. Mm-hmm. And this is when, uh, he invites Jim and Pam over for a dinner party. He also invites Angela and Andy over mm-hmm. to the dinner party. He doesn't invite Dwight because Dwight doesn't have a, a girlfriend. <laughs> like Angela had left him season three when he killed her cat, when he mercy killed her cat. <laughs> Remember that? Like she told him to go over there and give the cat medicine. I and so he, <laughs> he killed the cat. He put the cat in the freezer. Oh my God. And yeah, you can see like scratches. She said you can see scratches in the freezer. So she broke up with him because of that. And so she started dating. That's when she started dating Andy and stuff. So Dwight ends up bringing his old babysitter to the party, and it's really awkward. It's just so fucking awkward. Yeah. The lady that plays his babysitter, I cannot remember her name. She's like this. She was in. Uh, what, do you, what do you think Dwight is as a person? He he's one of my favorite characters. Like but I did as a person. He what is, do you think he? I is? don't fucking know. Yeah, he's so. 
Because you want to just be like, oh, he's a fucking weirdo. But then you'll see he has these glimpses of like just being a really nice person, like an actual human being. He seems like a person who's constantly trying to do the right thing. He just doesn't know how. he doesn't know what the <laughs> right thing is. He, I remember the episode, the one that sticks out to me is when he made that doomsday device. He was like, if you have five mistakes in a day, he was going to send all the emails with them talking shit to Robert California. Mm-hmm. The funniest one, the, the emails he was like, uh, Jim had wrote the email talking about Creep. Uh, Robert California's favorite song is Creep by Radiohead and Creep by uh, TLC. <laughs> <laughs> and they went to his house and uh, they were like doing all this shit. And uh, at the end, he ended up, you know, not sending it. And he put on the hat that they had got him. It was just like a really sweet episode. Like, yeah. he was like, yeah, I'm going to have to deal with these people for the rest of my life. But he was just like rocking in the chair all happy. I was like, oh, yeah. He, <laughs> um. You could tell he was probably emotionally abused from the moment you yep. saw him. You're like, oh, man, this kid he probably woke up. sexually repressed. Yeah, he probably woke up with, like, tacks around his bed <laughs> because he woke up five minutes late. Like, just just so much fuck- shit. Did you, what was the episode where he was like, he's really good with kid with babies because he's been raising a baby since he was a baby? <laughs> he was like, <laughs> in the Shrew family, we, we raise babies uh, since we're babies. So once we become a baby, the youngest raise the older kid. Yeah. He's just so fucking, I love that about him too. Like this weird version of German history that he has. It's just so fucking, it's really weird. It's like this, um, again, it's like all this repressed anger and like the stakes of his, it feels like if you look at his life, you realize the stakes of his life are so high. Yeah. Like he couldn't fuck up from the moment <laughs> he was born. At all. So from the moment he was born, he was already taking care of other people. Mm-hmm. They're also babies. So if they die, it's and on then him. this is on you, you baby. Fucking, <laughs> 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 so, so, oh so man. It's really like, he's just, he looks like somebody, like, if I were ever to become a dominatrix, See, now I have he to would be the that. first customer to walk in the door <laughs> just because he's just so wound up. I don't remember what episode it was, but it was the episode where his aunt died. It was towards the last season where his aunt died. And um, it showed that basically was going to be the pilot because they were going to have a spinoff of, of the Shroot family. Mm-hmm. And it was like Dwight's family. The, and they were taking over like her farm. Mm-hmm. They're taking over the aunt's like huge farm. So they showed his sister. They showed his brother. His sister like left and went to the city and is supposed to be like this big writer. But she doesn't. She's not really. And she has like this little nerdy ass son. And then his brother is like a weed farmer. So you see like. All this oh. crazy ass shit. So yeah, that was supposed to be his own spinoff show, but they ended up not mm-hmm. making it. So that was basically supposed to serve as the pilot for the show. That's oh. one of my favorite episodes too. I forgot to write that one. Down. It's so many good fucking episodes. Yeah. So it, this is one of those shows that you have to watch from beginning to end yeah. for payoffs to come mm-hmm. back. Um, that it's just really smart writing. You plant so Easter good. eggs and then you come yeah, back to them and you pick so them up great. a season, two seasons down the line. You're like, oh, that's why they, and it's not really any plot holes like that I can just think. I know there's everything has some type of plot holes, but mm-hmm. that and How I Met Your Mother are really good at, like you said, like referencing shit that happened before, making it make sense, and going along mm-hmm. with with the stories and stuff like that. So that's another one. Um, I like. I said the dinner party already. Oh, I I didn't finish that one. The my favorite part of that whole episode is when Jan starts singing that song that her assistant wrote which is clearly about her because it kind of starts to be revealed that Jan is damn near like a, not a pedophile because he's like 18. So he might've been like 17, 18, which is yeah. legal, but he wrote this song and she kept playing it. It was like, she took me by the hand, made me a man that one night. So wrong. So right all night. You know, I know all the fucking songs. <laughs> But Jim and Pam stole the CD and they were playing it in their car. Mm-hmm. This is just so, such a fucking weird oh, that's ass. So creepy. And, and and fucking Michael had that little ass TV mounted on the wall. Oh, what? that twelve yeah. inch. <laughs> she broke it. Yeah, she Even threw a Dundee when did at that it. Show come out like in two thousand six, right? Uh, yeah, because that was season four. It came out in two thousand five. Does he have a television? So it was from four nine- seasons. Yeah, that was two thousand nine. They had way bigger flat screens. Yeah, like you did not need a television <laughs> from 2009. And then he mounted it. I mean, it. like 1996 on your desk. Because <laughs> you, like you can get a little LCD. It was so fucking funny. She threw the Dundee at it. <laughs> and then the cops came. The whole episode was just so fucking funny. Uh, that one. And then the Garden Party episode, that's when um, 
you see why Andy is the way he is, why he's always just talking. I went to Cornell. He's always kind of bragging because his parents treat him like shit. They like his younger brother better. So he basically had the garden party because his uh, brother, they had a garden party for his brother, and the dad was singing a song with the brother, congratulating him, all that stuff. So he basically wanted to invite Robert California to kind of brag about it. And Jim had wrote a book about garden party hosting, and Dwight bought it and had all this weird shit in it that Jim had just made up. You know, that's another good show about n- another good thing people like about the show is like all the pranks mm-hmm. that Jim was doing on Dwight because a lot of them were subtle, but some of them were just like so over the fucking top. Yeah, like uh, Asian Jim. That's my favorite. <laughs> I love the face that he makes when she kiss when Pam kisses him. Mm-hmm. He's like, "What the fuck is <laughs> what the fuck is this?" He was like, yeah, "You're not photo, Asian." The photo. <laughs> I the guess baby. you don't see color. That's what, good for you. <laughs> Fuck. First person to get legit say that. It's like, I guess I don't see color. <laughs> um, I fucking love that one. Yeah, so the show itself is uh, has gotten massive appeal. Um, it's one of the few shows where a fake company, Dunder Mif- Mifflin, um, has their own seat in uh, in office. <laughs> what? Uh, let me look it up. Um, I know they made like a... They have like office supplies with Dunder Mifflin and stuff on it, which is cool. I would buy some Dunder Mifflin paper. Like they're making a shit. They were making. They were making some good ass sales. Like I remember one time I was just listening to how much they were selling per thing. He was like, "Yeah, so that's five hundred reams of blah blah blah." I was like, "That's a lot of fucking paper." Yeah. So they're a business to business seller. So they sell like massive reams to different. It's a very. The point of it is that it's very boring. It's super fucking boring. Like who wants to sell paper? Twelve point glossy or cardstock. Yeah, that's the that shit doesn't even sound exciting. Uh, so okay, so it says here that the fictional company of Dunder Mifflin is now an actual member of the Greater uh, (laughs) Scanton Scranton Scranton (laughs) Scranton Scantron (laughs) Scantron. You know, because it's paper and shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait but a they're, second. They're part of the Greater uh, Scranton <laughs> <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they so brought a lot of business to Scranton. Like, people are going, like, tourist attractions mm-hmm. and shit to Scranton. Because who the fuck else is going to Scranton, Pennsylvania? There's not shit in Scranton, no. Pennsylvania. But now they have, like, this huge tour. It's a huge tourist city because people love the fucking show so much. Yeah, they they never filmed it. <laughs> Which is crazy. Yeah. Where the then they film in like uh They filmed in LA. I yeah, think. on a sound stage and shit. Yeah. Of That's course. fucking crazy. Uh what's my next one? I have a lot. I'm mad. Um the next one is Goodbye Michael. Michael lied and said he was leaving the day after, but he was really leaving that day because he didn't really want to say goodbye to everybody. Mm-hmm. So he went and like was doing stuff with different people and like basically saying his goodbyes to them. But the saddest part was because Pam wasn't there. Pam was doing some stuff and Michael thought he was going to leave without seeing her. And then he ended up like, she ended up meeting him at the airport and she took off the mic. So you couldn't hear what they said to each other. You just see them crying and hugging. So it was just like this really sweet. Yeah. Yeah. The only person that knew that he was leaving that day was Jim. Jim figured it out. And so they're like, you know, they're saying goodbye and they're damn near not crying. And I'm trying not to fucking cry because I'm so happy that he's leaving because he finally got married and had kids, which is what he always wanted to do. But <laughs> goddamn, I don't want you to leave. So that one's really sad. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is you already know it has to be this one. It's the fucking finale. Season nine, episode 24 and 25, because everybody got their happy ending. Every oh. single person got their happy ending. Nelly, um, who was the British lady that had came from... Uh, she she knew like the Kathy Bates's character. I can't think of her name mm-hmm, right now. Mm-hmm. But she had been wanting a baby. She been wanting to adopt. So she ended up a, like stealing. She stole a baby, which is fucked up. <laughs> but I don't feel that bad. So basically, like Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this show just kind of fucks up your moral compass. Yeah, it's like, like yeah, yeah but happy. she's so sweet. She deserves that. Ba- well, Ryan, it was. I don't even think it was Ryan's baby. It was his girlfriend's baby that he had been dating. The baby's name was Drake, and she just left the baby with Ryan, mm-hmm. and Ryan just brought the baby. And he saw Kelly, and Kelly was with uh the doctor guy, the, the Indian doctor dude, and she basically left him and ran away with Ryan, and Ryan just left the fucking baby. So Nellie stole the baby, and so now she had a baby. She just stole the baby. She took the baby. <laughs> so um, many baby swapping. Yeah. <laughs> Dwight and Angela got married, which was like, oh, fucking finally, because both of you weirdos can't be with anybody else yeah they're very um i picture a very kind of amish lifestyle uh, just yeah. everything very stark and wooden 
They got married in their own graves, which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. So the show does a good job of making you feel bad about good things and mm-hmm. good about bad things. Yeah, I agree. The <laughs> first episode I ever saw was the one. Scott's Tots? Scott's Tots. Oh, my God. That is the worst fucking episode, especially because they're all like people of color. And it's like, God damn, because I know people do shit like that. Like you go, you want to feel good about yourself. So you go down to the hood and like deal with those kids and shit. He promised to pay for them to go to college. All of them. All of them. It was like 30 something kids. Yes. It was so fucked up. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I stood, I literally stood up and I, and I just walked around and I said, I can't do this. That and episode I, makes my stomach hurt. They're, they put a song together and they were dancing, oh pop locking and shit. What you going to do? Make our dreams come true. Hey, Mr. Scott, what you going to do? Oh, oh my God. God it was it's just, the worst. It's just sitting there and I, and I don't even know how it ends. I'm too scared to watch it. Okay, like it, so it makes me physically <laughs> nauseous. He gives them fucking laptop batteries. <laughs> Not even laptop. He gives them laptop batteries. Oh and God. um, no. it was the, the best part of the episode to me is Stanley. Because Stanley was like, has it been 13 years already? And he pulls out the newspaper article. And Stanley's just, whenever Stanley laughs, it's the best. Because, you know, he's always so mean. <laughs> but he's, like, crying. He promised them in third grade that he would pay for them yeah. to go. Well, 10 years, actually. He'd pay for them to go to fucking college. Yeah, whenever he chuckles, you know the world is burning. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, what else happened well, in the episode? He also has my favorite quote of all time. Did I stutter? No. Oh. <laughs> Uh, well, that was a good one, but I'm thinking of, um, who doesn't want to go to jury duty, <laughs> air conditioning, you get paid to judge people all day. Mm. <laughs> I like that one. And pretzel day. Pretzel day. Yeah. Cause he was so happy about that pretzel. And, uh, I think Phyllis had tried to skip in line. Well, Bob Vance was, who was her husband, which, and they're one of my favorite couples. I'll talk about that later. But Bob Vance was holding Phyllis's line, uh, spot in line. Mm. It stands behind him. He's like, uh, uh-uh, nope, nope. He was like, come on, man. This is nope. No, end of the line. End of the line. <laughs> oh, shit. I fucking love it. I There's fucking only love 10 it. people in the company. <sighs> That's why it's so fucking funny. It's, it's so petty. It's, it's so fucking petty. But oh, at the end of that uh, Scott's Tots episode, one of the guys comes out. He's like, man, well, you know, you, why'd you lie to us and blah, blah, blah. So Michael agrees to pay for his books for the rest of the year. And so he was like, they're expensive, you know, probably like a thousand dollars a year or something like that. And Mike was like, Ooh, ah. he's like, all right, well, I'm going to write you four post dated checks. Just call me before you try to cash them and stuff like that. So, but at the end, it does have a sweet ending because, you know, Aaron, Aaron, who's one of my favorite characters, because she's so, she's so stupid, but she's so lovable. She's talking about, yeah, a lot of them might not have graduated if it wasn't for you. Like you gave them hope. And stuff like that. And so she was like, you know, just think about it like that. And then they started singing the song, which pissed me off because I'm like, fuck y'all at the end of the day. Yeah, that's sweet. But still, like, you completely you ruined fuck those kids. kids you fu- they probably didn't even apply for scholarships because they thought you were going to pay for them to go to college. Ugh. I'm like, fuck you, Michael Scott. Yeah, again, you, you, know, you <laughs> try to make you feel good about yeah, horrible shit. It's so fucking bad. And feel bad about pretty good shit. Ah, it's so bad. Um. Uh, what else did I want to talk about? Oh, like uh, one of the good things about the show is just like the relationships about the people. Cause like you're saying, it's not, it, it's not really about the paper company. It's not about the paper. It's more so like about the people and how they interact with one another and their relationships within this like super duper small company. Like you said, it's like 10 fucking people in the company. Yeah. So who's your, like your favorite relationship in the show? Uh, Friendship think, or like dating? I think it's Jim and Dwight. Me too. That's on my That's list. It's just, they're it's almost cartoonish the way they yep. treat each other um because dwight is the perfect straight man there is no bigger <laughs> straight man than even though he's crazy um, and all the shit he does is ridiculous and over the top his face is so flat his expression it just it never changes it never changes and he just nails it every single time he just nails his knee <laughs> he always looks constipated yeah and angry and afraid like <laughs> so like jim is just bugs bunny like that's you what know, it feels yeah, like bugs bunny elmer fudd i can see that did you see the episode one of my favorite pranks that he ever pulled i don't know why this is so funny to me he found out where Dwight got his suits uh, clean, like which Taylor. Mm-hmm. And then Jim got a suit made that was like a rip away suit. And Dwight was walking in and Jim just comes and rips off all his fucking clothes and just keeps running. That shit's fucking funny. That's some cartoony level shit. The one where he like, uh, 
he gift wrapped his desk and Dwight threw his briefcase on it and it, it just completely collapsed. I think one of my favorite Dwight lines is uh, identity theft is a <laughs> Oh, when he was acting like him, beats yeah. bears. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. Galactica. <laughs> I like the episode where Andy says he's not going to give them their bonus if they don't stop pranking each other on Christmas. Oh. And so they started acting like the other person was pranking them so the other person <laughs> couldn't get the bonus. <laughs> and Dwight put a fucking porcupine in uh, his own desk and acted like it was Jim mm-hmm. and Jim acted like he was calling animal control. Mm-hmm. And he was like, what's the, what's the porcupine's name? Henrietta. And he's like, ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> ah, that shit is fucking funny. But then like that, that's what makes the finale so good because he makes Jim his best man or bestest minch. Aww. And he was doing all these pranks and they were called Guten Guten pranks or whatever. Pranks? Yeah. So they were like, he was acting like he was pranking him, but it was really like really nice stuff. Like he had fired Kevin on an, uh, towards the end. And Kevin ended up opening a bar, and so he like reconciled with Kevin, and like yeah, why did Kevin? Oh, because he was like he doesn't do shit here. He doesn't do anything. Yet when Dwight became manager, he uh he fired him, and he was like, if anybody has anything to say about why I shouldn't fire Kevin, go ahead and say it. And everybody was like, no, don't fire him. He was like, based on merit, and everybody just says, shut the fuck up. He fired him, and he fired Toby. Oh yeah, Toby. that shit was fucking funny. Toby, Toby and Michael's relationship is so funny to me. Because Michael just fucking hates Toby. And Toby doesn't even really do anything. No, Toby's just a guy. Doing but his you job. Know you know, the thing is, I think uh, Michael is afraid of Toby. Mm-hmm. Because if everybody realized that he's a competent person and that he just takes things in stride, um, Michael would quickly get fired <laughs> and replaced. <laughs> like, he, Toby knows everything that Michael knows how to do. He's mm-hmm. really chill. Uh, yeah, he's oh, very yep. polite. He it doesn't mind. Come on, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't say and he's that. such a sad, sad, he's so sad. He, he can't do that. He's always talking about his ex-wife. Oh. Did you see why? The saddest, the saddest shit was when uh, it was Pam and Jim were getting CC christened. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I can't go back into a church. Cause, so to- uh, Toby used to be a fucking priest. And then he met his wife. And so he left the seminary for her. Yeah. And then she le- left him. Yeah. So it was like he basically lost his life's work for this woman. And then she just fucking left him. She just bounced. It's so fucking sad. It's so fucking sad. Yeah. I, uh, every character is so interesting. Like Kevin Malone, uh, he had that great bit where he was like, me do. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't, me save time. <laughs> <laughs> You remember when they did that, uh, when Oscar made that video making him sound like Cookie Monster? <laughs> <laughs> he was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I also like when Kevin made that chili. That makes me so sad because oh. he was so hey, He's like, yeah, roast the, the peppers. It for takes five days ah, to make this And he just chili. spilled it. <laughs> It is my family's legacy. <laughs> like, really this is probably the best thing I do, and he's scooping it up. That shit's funny. I really like uh, the relationship between Angela and Oscar mm-hmm. and the senator. Oh. That whole thing, that's like my favorite. Angela's in a lot of love triangles, but that one's probably my favorite. I really like how they did Oscar's character. Mm-hmm. Like when he finally came out as gay and then like... Yeah. They didn't make him like a stereotype. No, he was just a guy. Yeah. And Michael's like, you know, because you're gay. You're the gayest man. He's <laughs> like, I'm I'm just gay. <laughs> no, it's just Michael being a piece of Remember shit. Remember when he kissed him? Oh. That, <laughs> that's probably, that's one of the cr- most cringeworthy episodes oh, to me because Oscar is like pulling back and he's like, Ugh. I don't want this. Do you, do you remember the episode? Uh, I think at the end of that, the fun, one of the funniest scenes is Angela and Dwight are talking to Toby. That might be a different episode when there's something when they found out about the senator. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because Angela tried to get Oscar killed, but then she was just going to get him kneecapped. <laughs> <laughs> and so they, him and Dwight go and talk to Toby, and they're asking him these questions about, you know, how, do, how does a man... How to who knows which man's penis is going to open up and accept the other penis. And she was like, do their penises intertwine like that medical symbol is just the funniest <laughs> shit It's so fucking funny because, you know, that they, they don't fucking know. Uh, there's also a character that showed up very late in the game when Michael left. Um, and it's uh, James Spader's character. Fucking Robert California. Robert. He's California. I did not like him, but then I liked him. But then I didn't like I him. Love. See, I you love would. James Spader. Yeah. He's just, just such a vicious weirdo. It's so the weirdest episode is when they go to his house for that pool party. <laughs> 
and he's just walking him around. Like everything he says is like this really big speech. Everything. It sounds so sinister, and then you realize it's just him. He's just talking, and he's just talking. It's so fucking weird. Like even how he got the job. Like he basically got Kathy Bates' character to quit and give her his job. That's how he became CEO. Yeah. He's so. You remember when um. He fired Andy, and Andy was getting his job back. He was like, you don't even know who the fuck I am. Robert California's not even my name. I'm the fucking Lizard King. <laughs> and I was like, what? I'm the fucking Lizard King. Wh- what? He, he He's such a great comedian because he's so extra in terms of how evil he delivers He's so every evil. Line. Oh, so good. The, uh, you remember when he was drunk and he closed that branch, and he had left a voicemail on Nelly's phone, and she came up to him and was like, no, 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 maybe. And he told Pam to steal her phone. And Pam was like, oh, I'm so busy. He was like, tell me what you're doing that, that's making you so busy that you can't help me. Name one thing. And he just looked at her. I was like, God damn, that would be the scariest boss to have. Oh, James Spader could be my daddy. Of course he could, pervert. <laughs> you love a man with curly hair and glasses. Is that him? He was never wearing, was he wearing he glasses? He had glasses. And he was short. And he like his hair was kind of short and curly. I don't remember his hair being curly. It wasn't like super duper curly. Like on the ends, it looks longer than that. Yes, I just like how mean he is. He's so fucking mean. What a mean daddy. Uh, I also (laughs) (laughs) speaking of him, I like uh, when Idris Elba comes for like those episodes when he fires Michael. Michael makes his own Michael Scott Paper Company, (laughs) (laughs) and because Idris Elba is like the first person that really challenges Michael on his incompetence, Mm -hmm. other than Jan. But even with Jan, it was like. They were still fucking. So, like, yeah, she thought he was incompetent, but she still, she gave him, like, a lot of leeway still. Yeah. Like, she knew she, he was a fuck I up. I know you're dumb, but you're also a Naxos. Yeah. So, yeah, each yourself was, like, the first person that really challenged Michael and was like, hey, I need this shit done properly. And the funniest thing is that when Idris Elba came, um, Jim had on that tux. Jim had on a tux because uh, he said Dwight had put out a memo talking about dress code. And so Jim was trying to be funny and put on a tux. Mm -hmm. And then Idris Elba came. And Idris Elba did not like Jim. So that was also funny because, like, this is Jim so lovable, blah, blah, blah. And this person just does not like him at all. No matter what he does, he can't win him over. Jim can kind of douche. He's a douche. He's a low-key douche. When you start rewatching it. Yeah. Because he convinces Pam to. Let's just talk about uh, Jim and Pam. Uh, for a moment, uh, loved him the first time. Don't really like him now. When I rewatched it, yeah, like the twelfth time, you realize that he manipulates her out of a out of out of a marriage. Mm-hmm. Um, he also convinces her not to go to school, which which made me mad because yeah. I didn't realize that's what he was doing. Yeah, he was like constantly talking it down. So mm-hmm. she could have been a, a nurse or yeah. something. Like she could have <laughs> made something out of herself. Besides being a, like a receptionist, she, was, she wasn't Not even that, that good at art though. Like her art was subpar. It was all right, but Michael <laughs> she could have got better. And Jim was like, Ur. but Michael got it. Yeah, he was like, oh, I like this. I like those lines. That's like one of that's a sad episode to me when nobody comes to her art show, <gasps> and then Oscar and his boyfriend Gil are like talking shit about it. He's like, it's so derivative. She's not creative, it's, it's and she's standing behind him like, oh. But Michael comes. He's like, that's our building. Yeah. Huh. I like that. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it makes you like Michael. Yeah, she's trying. <laughs> I also hate it. But now when I look back at it, like I, I like when I watched it the first time, I, I stopped liking Pam in season nine because she was like, I don't want to leave Scranton. I don't want you to pursue your dreams, blah, blah, blah. But I forgot that Jim had did the same thing yeah. to her with the art school. But then I don't know. It's just I don't. It's I a don't, very human relationship. Yeah, it it. it I really stopped. Like, she was like, I don't want to leave Scrant. I don't want you to make all this money. Like, when I watch it, I'm like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Go get this cash. Yeah. You can still be a receptionist wherever the fuck you want to be a receptionist. That's that's just me because as a comedian, I'm like, fuck you. I'm not going to not follow my dreams because you want to <laughs> stay in this small ass town working for a paper company. They do end up leaving and they go to Austin mm-hmm. and stuff like that, which is cool. Yeah. But yeah, that shit just made me mad. And. I do like their inside jokes. I do like that they can just look at each other and they just like being around each other. Those That's fun. Cool. I think those are my, I've had both relationships, romantic relationships and friendships where we can just look across the room. And, like and it's just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you remember that one time? <laughs> <laughs> and I think this kind of, they make the show really good because damn near everybody's crazy. Like you have, it's like kind of, you know, with the office is split in half. It's like, all these fucking crazy people and then like the people that just are reacting to the crazy people. So like the some of the funniest shit is just Jim looking at the camera. Yeah, it's crazy about all of this. It started as a um as a pilot in the British version. It started as a pilot 
in the documentary style mm-hmm. just because it was cheaper to produce. Yeah. So uh, Stephen Merchant, um, good mm-hmm. friends with Ricky Gervais, who always seen if you see one, you'll probably have seen the other. But Stephen Merchant just made this pilot mm-hmm. as a to get a job at the BBC, but he just did it this mockumentary style just because it was cheaper. Yeah. Like, and he did it because uh, it's like off. one camera hand. Yeah, it's, it's really and I like that feel it gives you. Yeah. It it, it the the sister show would. We n- definitely need to do an episode on Parks, Parks and Rec. Rec. That's what I just had, uh, was about to talk about next is uh, Greg Daniels, the showrunner, had left during the middle of the sh- like season three or something like that mm-hmm. to do Parks and Rec. Well, yeah, because The Office blew up. Mm-hmm. Nobody thought The Office when it was yeah, going to last all. more than two seasons. Yeah, that's a fucking nine. That's yeah. crazy. Well, uh, in the middle of season two, The 40-Year-Old Virgin came out. Oh, my God, which is one of my favorite movies. It's an amazing movie. It holds <laughs> up. It's still sweet. It's still funny. It's still kind of gross. It's mm-hmm. wonderful. It's a, it's a great, great fucking comedy. Um, but that just blew up Steve Carell's mm-hmm. career, and all of a sudden they have this powerhouse on this hand on yep. their hands. So they're like, I, I guess we're not. We gonna shall cancel. keep it around. We'll, we'll keep it around. Um, but when uh, the showrunner uh, mm-hmm. Greg Daniels Greg Daniels like moved over to Parks and Rec, it does not translate well at <laughs> all. The first season, the first season is not good. It's not good. I I almost stopped watching. Baby, I was like, no, 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 no. Just push through. Watch this, and then then Leslie's character starts to become, and you start to see her. I like her relationships with her relationship with Ron, Mm -hmm. like just because they're such a stark comparison. Yeah, but we'll go more into that. Yeah, (laughs) and then and then it definitely changes season three. Yeah, you have to go through two seasons. Yeah, of of. Yeah, and feeling it weird, and I realized that the reason why it's because. Everyone's shitting on Leslie. Yeah. Like the first two seasons, people were like, no, you can't do it. Can't no, have a can't party. No it. party. Can't be done. As soon as everybody starts saying yes to her, um, that's when the show really takes mm-hmm. off. Because uh, you'll see it even in the second half of season two where people are like, yeah, okay, let's fuck it. Just let's do let's it. just <laughs> do it. Um, so the, the office is really mm-hmm. special in that way where you have people constantly telling each other no. And you just fucking do it. And it works. <laughs> the first rule of comedy is yes and. Yeah. Like first rule Let's of improv. Let's see where this is going to go. Yes. You say yes to the your person and then you're going to plan together. Because if you say no, then you start negotiating. Mm-hmm. You start like and coming that's up boring. with re- It's fucking boring. Can we talk about that with Star Wars, how that movie is so fucking boring because it's essentially just them having a fucking meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to just watch you talk about rules <laughs> like that. Like, that's fucking boring. Who wants to see that? It's a series of meetings. Yeah. You, the opening scene is a congressional meeting. <sighs> the second scene is, like, a meeting about what to do <sighs> with a kid on a planet. <sighs> the third is a meeting about buying a kid. <sighs> <laughs> it's just so it's fucking, so fucking meeting. It's just, uh, oh, no. fucking likes meetings. I never thought Except of Except on The You're Office. Right. Yeah. Those meetings are fucking hilarious. One of my favorite episodes is when Nellie, who I did not like at first. I had to like her later because she was so annoying. Kelly Nellie? No, Nellie, the British lady that came. Oh, okay. Yeah, like in, uh, she took she took Andy's job. We haven't talked about Mindy yet. Or yeah, oh yeah, I got right. it. She on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but when they were talking, because Andy had got fired, and but he was still working there. Like he got basically got demoted. Nellie just came and took over his job when he went to Florida to get Aaron. But she has that meeting about his dick being limp. In con- what is it called when you di- can't get your dick hard? Uh, erectile dysfunction. Some shit like that, but it starts with an I. Oh, uh, impotent. Impotent, yeah. And so, like, that's the shit they do in the meetings. And I remember Aaron was like, Toby, can't you do anything about this? And he was like, Aaron, HR is a joke. <laughs> 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 it's fucking great. But now since we're on that, we could talk. Kelly and Ryan's relationship mm-hmm. is, like, the worst relationship in the fucking show it's the most dysfunctional it is so good bad like fucking ryan treats kelly like shit and kelly's annoying as fuck Mm -hmm. she's really fucking annoying and he just treats her so bad like it's always like her chasing him yeah there's this um not fun version of cat and mouse going on yeah like they're they're uh, Jim and Dwight, if um, they if, was, if they were fucking, if they were fucking <laughs> terrible people, somehow rem- worse than they were before. I remember she started dating the doctor, and Ryan was like, he was talking to Pam, and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you know, I'd rather her be alone than with somebody else. 
Is that love? She was like, no, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> That's psychopath. Yeah, and then he got on a horse and like did a speech to her. And she was like, you know, Ryan, you know, I've been trying for you and I love you, but I don't want to be with you. Can we be friends? And she goes to hug him and then they just start kissing. Oh. And it's just, I forgot about that. yeah, it was just yeah, so yeah. fucked up. Like the whole relationship is she, fucked up. Um, yeah, because they're both psychopaths. Yeah, they are, they're both narcissists and they're mm-hmm. both psychopaths, and they both think they can win each other. That's yeah. the thing. They can. They think they can win. Did you see when she got with Daryl? Because I like, I really liked her with Daryl. It was a weird relationship, but she started dating Daryl, and um. Ryan had came back. I think this was after the Michael Scott yeah. paper company had we went through. We don't really see too much of the warehouse uh, yeah. in the show, but every time Daryl was on, it was, it was great. It was Patrice gold. O'Neal actually was in like the first season. No shit. Yeah. If you look, they, they were showing the warehouse guys a little bit more. He was in the first season and that was, it was one of those episodes where, um, they were doing like a safety meeting mm-hmm. and Patrice O'Neal was talking shit. And then that's when Michael acted like he was going to kill himself yeah. on that thing. But yeah, that, that's, that's fucking funny. But she was dating Daryl, and then Ryan was like, you got to break up with him if you want to love me and stuff. And he was doing push-ups and all this crazy-ass shit. And he wrote, like, this long text message for her to break up with Daryl, and he sent it to him. Mm-hmm. And they were both like, oh, I hope he's not going to care. And Ryan's like, I don't care if he doesn't care. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then Daryl just texts her back, K. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst thing. He's like, it's okay. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so that I like that. I really like Daryl and Andy's relationship since we're talking about Daryl. I really like their friendship that started to develop later because Daryl is so like, I just want to do my job. I'm trying to be professional. And Andy's like, let's sing and dance and shit like that. So it's, it's this really weird dynamic there. I like their relationship. Yeah. There's a, the, the show is not very plot heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, they try to, but the gold is in definitely in the character design. Like the office is a great show to watch character design. Yeah. Um, If you want a show where you find out uh, how to write interesting, individual, well-fleshed-out characters Mm -hmm. where everybody has a background. It's so fucking great. Because you know that there's a backstory to every person. And and you can can say what's going on, like Meredith, even though she doesn't get as much camera time as I feel like she should. I know exactly what's happening with her kids, this and this. Yeah, Phyllis, she used to be a slut in high school. That's so fucking funny to me. I was just before I came over here, I was watching the episode where she gets married and Michael was like pushing her dad down the aisle. Like he kept trying to make the, the wedding about him mm-hmm. and the dad was just mad. He just got up and started walking. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, <laughs> but he was, he was telling his speech and he was like, you look at Phyllis right now. And she looks really matronly, but back in high school, they used to call her easy rider. <laughs> and I'm like, why the fuck? Only this guy would say this shit at somebody's wedding. I I'll be surprised. Uh, you know what? Uh, I've seen, I've seen bad, bad wedding shows kind of in that line. That bad? Yeah. Like that bad. Like this guy stood up. He's like, Hey, I just want to, I want to say it was the best man. He's like, Hey, I had a great time. And you know, when we're at the bachelor party, he had all these strippers. On oh, him. come on, man. He's like shaking their tits in his face. And he's, and everyone's like, we're going to buy you a hooker. And he's <sighs> like, I don't know, guys, I'm getting married. And he's like, but he thought about it. And I was oh, like, what an like, ass. What <laughs> and you know, her fuck? grandma's mom is just sitting in the corner like, mm, mm, mm. It's just like divorce. <laughs> I give it a year. Give yeah. It a year. <laughs> like people are already placing bets on the, on it's, the table. It's fucking horrible. Did we already talk about Andy and Aaron as a couple? Andy, I don't think, no, I don't think we I have. really like because they're both stupid. I think I talked about that. <laughs> and I I didn't I didn't like how they made Andy's character turn into like this asshole. Like when he left because he went he he went through all of this shit to get Aaron. Like mm-hmm. he basically lost his job. He drove down to Florida. Like he did all of this shit to get Aaron back when they had broke up after the first time or whatever like that. Because he they broke up because fucking Michael told her that he was engaged to Angela and she didn't know. So she remember they broke up and she started dating that weird ass dude, Gabe. Mm -hmm. And then, um, he, she went to Florida cause Andy started dating somebody. She was trying to get him back. You know, they always had that back and forth thing. He went there, lost his job, did all this shit to get Aaron back. And then he went on this boat trip because his family lost all the money and he came back and he was just like an asshole to Nelly and just was being like an asshole to everybody. And I was like, I didn't like that. Like I, I really want, you know, I wanted them to end together. And then she got with, Pete, the guy that kept calling Plop. Yeah. And I know why they did it. They were trying to be like, oh, it's, it's a, you know, uh, Jim and Pam, but a newer version. Like, I got it. But I was like, that she was so much better with Andy. Yeah, I'm starting to realize how huge these 
this cast is because yes, it feels a lot. it feels so intimate. And then mm-hmm. you start looking at the cast list. I mean, we haven't talked about Clark or Mark mm-hmm. or Amy or David. Um, or excuse me. Or when all those people came from the other branch. Uh, yeah, like all these people. That we've, I'm looking at the list that are in like 17 to 20 episodes. Yes, yeah, a lot. And um, it feels like they're not <laughs> in it at all just because of. So far, focus on the core. The core group and how everything around them is being affected. But mm-hmm. yeah, it was, it was. Oh, it was so good. I mean, the this spanned um, a huge amount. It went from 2005 to 2013. That's fucking crazy. That's uh, seven years in the making. And yeah. It's such a good ass show. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at um the list of people who are some of the people that auditioned to be on The Office, mm-hmm. and it's crazy. Okay, so like Seth Rogen auditioned to be Dwight. Oh no! Yeah, I'm glad that didn't happen. All the people, like, I'm glad that it didn't happen. They were basically saying like his care. He was too affable. He was too likable. Yeah. You know, Dwight has it. Rain Wilson has that perfect blend of like, I don't like you, but I like you. Like you're weird looking, but I don't like, like you're Seth still. Rogan's laugh. <sighs> <laughs> I can't do Open it. your mouth. <laughs> Open your fucking mouth. I don't have the greatest laugh, but damn. No, nah, that laugh is gross. Um, Bob uh, Odenkirk. He was a. Uh, <sighs> Goddamn Breaking Bad. What's his name in there? Oh. He has that other spinoff show. Yeah, better yeah. Off Sal. Yeah, Better Off Sal. Uh, better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. I'm talking about Better Off Sal. But the cool thing, it was an episode where Pam goes to uh, goes on an interview in um, Philadelphia, in Philly, whatever fuck, and uh, she goes to this real estate agency, and he is there as the boss, and he's basically like Michael Scott reincarnated like he's weird playing the guitar and shit like that and that's when she's like you know i don't i don't want to be another receptionist i don't want to work for another michael scott i don't want blah 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 type shit whatever uh but he he basically him i could see him as as um steve carell's character like i think he would have been good like if he was in the whole show they both kind of have that like quirky weird kind of I don't think this show could have worked if they had somebody that was too similar to Ricky Gervais. Nah. British comedy is very good at cringing people out. Yep. Like, I, I guess because they're so polite, they're used to. <laughs> <laughs> like, ooh, but, ooh, this um, is against my manners. It doesn't translate well in the, in the U.S. Nah. Like you had to get somebody who played more dumb than cruel. Correct. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they went in a good direction. Mm-hmm. Ru- uh. Uh, Ryan Wilson. Or is it Rain? Rain Wilson, yeah. Rain Wilson. I just... He's amazing. He's really good. He's amazing because I keep looking at him and I'm wondering how he doesn't break all the time. I would have died every fucking episode. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I really, we didn't really talk about his relationship with Michael. It's such a fucked up, but good relationship. Serbian. Yeah. Like he felt like Iago and Aladdin. (laughs) And he just really just loves the shit and respects the fuck. He's the only one that really, I honestly feel like truly respects the fuck out of Michael. Well, it, and it's also because I feel like, like we said in the beginning that the stakes of his life is always have mm-hmm. always been so high. So he knows what it's like being responsible for yeah. everything all the time. That <laughs> he just wants to make sure everything is happening. Yeah, it needs to be good. Perfectly and on the dotted Did line as you possible. You remember the episode when he finally, he was like, uh, this was when Kathy Bates was manager and, and, uh, I forgot De- D'Angelo Vickers, uh, fucking Will Ferrell's character. I forgot he was in there. Mm-hmm. Remember he died. Like he wanted to come. He was playing basketball, talking about shit, and then the goal fell on him and stuff. Yeah. And then he died. So they didn't have a manager for a while. And the lady called to have Jim be the manager, and Jim was like, "No, nah, it's okay." So then they gave it to Dwight, and he was like the interim manager. And he brought a gun in the office and he shot it, <laughs> and so he got fired. And so like <laughs> at the end, when he finally becomes manager, that's one of, for me, one of the most satisfying episodes. It's the same one where he's like, he finally got his black belt too. Yeah. And he's like doing the shit in the office mm-hmm. and the, and uh, what's his name? David. Uh, the one who was the CEO, like the first two season, seasons, David uh, oh. Wallace, David Wallace. Okay. I don't remember the, the, the real dude's name, but he was talking to the sensei and he was like, sensei, do you usually like make, house calls and stuff like this and he was like nah Dwight just wanted to do it at the place that he loves the most <laughs> and so that's when Aww. David Wallace yeah he talked to Jim and he was like I'm thinking about making Dwight the manager you think that's a bad idea and then Jim was like nah you know I like it and then but the, another sweet moment right after that was Clark the dude that was like he was in like a what's that fucking movie 
He's Amish. I don't remember. It was like an Amish movie. They were going on this weird trip. Rain six. Wilson something. also did a movie called um, S- Super. A, Super. Yeah, that shit is good. It's an indie film. You can. F- I think it's still on Netflix. It's a hard movie to watch. It I, is. I like him. Fucking brutal, but it's good. so good. It's, he, it's awkward. It's a man it's always, trying to be a you superhero. Feel bad. Yeah, it's a man trying to be a superhero, trying to save his wife. He brings a lot of that Dwight energy mm-hmm. of like trying to do everything as perfectly as possible. Yeah. It also has the the woman from Juno. I'm thinking of uh, Ellen, Emily Page, Emily Page, or Ellen Page, uh, Ellen Page. I'm thinking of em- Emily Blunt, Ellen Page. Yeah. I like her too. Uh, Ellen Page. Uh, there's a very graphic scene. If, uh, so, like, sp- spoiler warning. I'm I'm not gonna spoil the movie, but it's hard to watch. Yeah. Um. But that being said, like, Rain Wilson is so. Did good. you see him in the rocker? I haven't seen that yet. Please watch The Rocker. It's basically like he was like in a in a band, like like think like uh who did they model it after? Like a famous eighties band. Mm-hmm. I can't think of the name right. Talk dirty to me. That was Kiss. No, that was a Kiss. Poison. Like Poison. It was based on Poison. Yeah, or something like that. You could tell like they kind of. And Bradley Cooper was in it, and uh, Rain Wilson was the drummer. And they were like, "Hey, you can sign this deal, but you got to kick the drummer out." The the record exec wants his a nephew in it. So they kicked him out and then he's just like this aging rocker and he starts a band with his nephew. Emma, uh, Emma Stone's in it. Oh. Uh, Josh Gad, the dude that played Olaf's voice and was also like, Oh, he's he was in it. also in, uh, the original musical for, uh, the book of Mormon. It's so good. So good. Watch the rocker. And then book of Mormon is really good too. Yeah. Oh, and I was still doing the list too. Kevin, um, Eric uh, Stone Street, the same, the dude, the big dude that's in Modern Family, and he was also in Bad Teacher. Mm. He was gonna audition for Kevin. Oh, yeah, I like the Kevin they got though, but I could see that kind of sort of. I could see it. Okay, I could see what's going on. If you watch Bad there. Teacher, like his character in Bad Teacher, uh, I think he would. It would still been good. Uh, Pam, I cannot say this name, lady's name, Catherine Han H A H N. She was in Step Brother. She was the wife that was singing in the car. Oh. she was going to audition for Pam, but they were saying she's, she was too like hard. She, she has that hard kind of edge about her, like sassy, she like don't the fuck with her. Car, the one that was singing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. yeah, yeah. She's amazing in everything. The, she was also in parks and rec. She uh-huh. played a, uh, political consultant. Yep. She nails it. Every scene, like every scene she comes in, she's, she's so fucking funny. She plays it hard. She plays yep. a hard ass woman who just wants to get shit done and she doesn't have time, yep. but her life is amazing. It's so fucking great. And you just want to <laughs> give up everything to be her. Like, that's what I get to do. Mm-hmm. Speaking of parks and rec, uh, guess who auditioned for Jim? Who? Adam Scott. Same dude that was in the step brothers. What? Yeah. No kidding. Mm-hmm. And then they put him in, he was played Ben in parks and rec. And then, uh, Another one, he's which too sweet. He, yeah, he's too sweet. He doesn't really have that. He, I've seen him play movies where he's a douchebag, and I'm watching. It's just it so funny. Time. It's comical. It's like, yeah, like Step Brothers. He was an asshole, but it was yeah. still funny because <laughs> yeah. the fucking Catalina wine mixer. <laughs> uh, John Cho from Harold and Kumar. Yeah, I could see him. Yeah, he was gonna be Jim. Yeah, I could see him as a Jim. I, I, I could, could make with a that good, a good Jim. So yeah, that's a lot. That's really the cool. And original Jim was um, Martin Freeman. Uh, he's the Hobbit. He's uh, Bilbo Baggins Bilbo from the Hobbit. Baggins. I could see that. Yeah, and he. Uh, oh, I would have loved to see him with Pam. He also plays uh, John Watson on Sherlock, mm-hmm. which is a Aww. show that I loved for the first two seasons, yeah, and they started hated. doing some stupid shit. And then they <laughs> hated for the second two seasons. Just doing but some he plays. Uh, yeah, he plays Jim in the in the OG, and uh, he's really good. He he knows a lot of the. You can see kind of the same mannerisms, kind of passing from uh, the UK Jim to the US Jim, and um, they're what's both his name in the UK? Isn't it like Tim? I think it's Tim. Because <laughs> I remember they had, I just, they did a Saturday Night Live sketch. Ju- it, it just came out. Ricky Gervais is talking about how they made a Japanese version. What? They didn't. It's just like a sketch. And oh, fucking Bill Hatter is uh, Jim. Steve Carell's in it. Kristen Wiig is in it as Pam. And they're doing like the Japanese. Vo- it's actually really funny. Yeah. Mart- uh, Martin Freeman plays Tim. You're Tim. Right. Fucking Tim. Only reason I know that is because Ricky Gervais. Because like I told you, I watched the UK version, but then I was just like, nah, I don't even remember. Yeah. They don't have a Dwight in that version either. Nuh-uh. Like, so and the, you need a Dwight. You, they <laughs> have somebody named Gareth. Um, who's not as much fun. He's a lot more kind of bland and like do your work type shit. Mm, no, it's, he's like, 
he's more sleazier feeling. Ugh. Like Dwight, he'll do fucked up stuff, but he, you can tell because he firmly believes. He feels believes like it's correct. It's aligning with his moral compass and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but this guy's like, huh, his moral compass is a little off. It's skewed. Yeah. Um, some of the best kid, one of my favorite characters, and I didn't realize how much I fucking love this character until I started rewatching it again, Creed. Creed is the most funny characters in the show because he just does the old man. Oh, he just does so much random shit. Did you? It was one episode. He's like, "Oh, this sh- y'all are filming a show. What's a?" Uh? He's like, "Man, my parents are gonna kill me when this comes out." I was just <laughs> like, "What the fuck are you talking?" <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, you know, just a typical life in the day of a dog food company." Yeah. What Ooh. the fuck are you talking about? Ooh, this this poor old man with dementia. <laughs> oh my god, he's. I remember somebody said that they didn't want to sit by Creed because he has that old man smell. He's like, I can see that. Yeah. He's just so he has a blog. Of course he does. Did you see that? But Ryan, it's not even a real blog. Ryan just opened up a Word document, and then Creed just <laughs> started <laughs> typing. And I think one of the funny you know what it counts. It's, uh, I'm gonna it's, say it it's counts. fine. It's a blog. Yeah. The funniest to me, I don't know why this is so funny to me. Like I, I kept rewinding this part. It was the episode where Andy, Andy was doing Sweeney Todd, and then you just see Creed calling during the thing and he's doing like a review of the play on the phone you see him on the phone he's like this ham-fisted uh p- production of Sweeney Todd is da, da 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 but I'm like what when the fuck did he become a play critic yeah what the fuck is going on and I, I kept rewinding it and I just was fucking cracking the fuck up he's his own animal he just does shit he's he just good does shit. um Meredith we kind of talked about Meredith I, I like I like Meredith she doesn't give a shit yeah, she's an underrated character. They don't. I don't think they use her nearly as much as they could. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, she's I like when she shaves her head. Oh, I forgot about that. When when pa- Pam is up, I was like, Pam, you're a fucking bitch for this. So the way I've seen <laughs> The Office is jumping in episodes because, like I said, the cringe would get me so bad that I couldn't watch all of them. It's too I, much. It's too much. Even the U.S. version, it's it's too fucking much. I can't watch that. I can't watch prank shows. I don't like prank shows. I just I they piss me off. I can't fucking do it. Um, but the writing and the characters always bring me back, and I see quotes. I'm like, shit, this is really good. And I jump back and I try to watch it, and something horrible happens. Yeah. I'm like, oh god. That's what go. got me liking Mindy. Uh, killing. I don't really like the Mindy project. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because well, we can. Well, oh, fuck it. We talking about it. I don't like that she clearly doesn't like her skin. Like, you can see she's always trying to be white in the mini project. That's what I don't like. What do you mean? Like, if you watch the first season, everybody she dates is a blonde, blue-eyed, white guy. I always and wonder then, if that's a uh, if that's her choice. Or yeah, she writes the show. So she... Yeah. Wow. She writes the show. She produces it. Like, it's her show. So that, that was happening in the first season, and she started getting a lot of shit about it. So, like, the second ish season that's when she added the black nurse but then the black nurse is clearly a stereotype oh. she's like uh-uh ray ron and all this other it's like really and then she tries to she dates neo eventually in one episode, but there's only one episode so it's like i see a lot of it seems like a lot of self-hatred in the show and that's why i don't like i don't know her personally so i can't say she doesn't like her skin but just the perception that i'm getting because i've met people who like you know you've been bullied for shit like that and you ended you end up wanting to be white and she talks about that a lot in the show like if you just watch the show it's a lot of episodes where she's like oh i can't wait to get with danny because we're gonna have this mixed baby and she's always talking about trying to have a mixed baby and i hope he gets your eyes and then it's one episode where she talks about when oh, she was in college and she puts on a blonde wig and blue eyes and it's like if all the other shit didn't happen already where you're you know what i mean it's, it's like a pattern of like just seemingly self-hatred oh. and it makes me sad because i really like her her as a person like is like just the shit that i've seen yeah. but the show just seems like and when i say mindy hates her skin i'm talking about the character i don't know her as a person mm-hmm. I'm talking about the person seems to hate her skin it's just really yeah i haven't sad. seen any of the show at all so mm-hmm. I, I i don't feel like i can say anything about if it if you watch it, it it's really apparent yeah, it's it's one of those things like w- when you're a person of color, especially a woman, and you're watching television, like all this stuff kind of jumps out. Yeah. When you see, when you finally see a person of color show up on screen, and then they start doing all this shit that's like, huh, you seem to be doing your best to erase your yeah. identity. Like she doesn't really show her, her, fa- like I'll compare it to another show with another um, 
person of color that I really like, Aziz Mm and sorry, like master of none. If you watch that show in comparison to her show, like he basically, he has everybody. It's a really diverse show. Mm -hmm. And if they show their backstory, he shows his parents. She doesn't really show her parents to like the second season. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't really even talk about her culture. And I know like she doesn't have to, but when you see a show like that and, and they're talking about, oh, she's the first South Indian woman to have her show on, on a t- cable and stuff like that. And for you to not address that, it kind of is like, okay. And she does end up showing her brother and she does end up showing this kind of stuff. But it's just like, now it feels like the only reason that they started doing it was because they were getting so much. They got like, if you look it up, they got so much shit for not having any other people of color, not having anything like everybody in the office is white. All the people she dates are white. Mm-hmm. All the stuff she talks about is like being white. When there's one, I think in season one where she goes to this club and she finally is talking about black guys and she's like, "Oh yeah, they like me because I have a big ass." And I'm like, "Come on, like that's the that's what you're bringing to the table when you talk about black men is that they just you know what I mean?" So yeah. it's just kind of like this, and it, it's tough because you're like, "Hey, you're the only person of color really in yeah. this cast. I need you to yeah. <laughs> bump we, it the fuck up. Can we talk about it? You don't have to like come in with like sorry's on yeah. and doing all like that's just not what we're it. asking." to do but you can be your own person like because i've been in that situation mm-hmm. before where i looked around I was like oh i'm the only latino here mm-hmm. like i'm the only person of color at all here and sometimes the only person of color and the only woman yeah and it's like oh shit this is glaring yeah how i'm the only person <laughs> here but it's like a a hard line because you don't want to be like, hey, I'm Latina and I'm so Latina and uh-huh, everything yeah. is so Latina and this is how it is to be Latina. But at the same time, it's like you can't deny who you are. And act like that's what's not happening. It's yeah. clearly what, what's going on, especially if you're going to address it, like give give the show these accolades. Okay, then you need to fucking talk about this. Yeah. And how is Mindy on the, well, Kelly on the show? Uh, um, they, they've had Diwali. Person. They, I like that episode where they talked about the Indian holiday and they go. It's so fucking funny because Michael was dating that chick, Carol. This mm-hmm. is when him and Jan are like having this Jan's kind of realizing she has feelings for him. Yeah. It's around that time, but he's dating Carol and he asks her to marry him. And she's like, we only, we don't like eight dates, <laughs> but he told her it was a costume party. So she comes dressed up like a cheerleader to this Indian holiday. And it's just so fucking funny. And you oh just see, God. I just love episodes like that where, because the show's so great. Like, you have these characters, and you just get to see them in different places. Like, you know Angela's going to act like this at a... Because this is a, a Hindu holiday. You know she's going to be a bitch there. Like, she was like, is there any uh, vegetarian food? He's like, it's all vegetarian. She's like, I'll just have some bread. And he picked it up and put it on her plate. She's like, oh, you touched it with your hands. Like, she's just, she's just such a bitch no matter where the fuck she's at. And yeah, there's this... Uh, you'll see this, like, in level two, level three improv classes. Mm-hmm. Um good improv is doesn't come from the stuff that's mm-hmm. that they're doing good s- improv it doesn't come from the situation good improv comes from the g- characterization yeah, and they you are can they if do. you have a good character you can drop them in any scenario yep, it doesn't you know matter how exactly weird it's gonna happen <laughs> you know what's gonna happen and you're rooting for it you want <laughs> it to happen so bad so that yeah I, it's really fucking great but even in the show even in the office i mean they kind of they don't really, I mean, she'll say stuff about her being Indian, da, da, da. Like they had the, where she was the person of color and, she, and Dwight basically was making her get a higher position because he was trying to like use her as a pawn and stuff like that. Yeah. But they don't really address it. I mean, they don't really address Stanley being, well, they do, they do address him being black way more than they address her being. Do you remember the episode where they were trying to catapult shit off the roof? I forgot why, but they threw a watermelon. And it landed on a car, and Michael was like, oh, my God, make sure. Go see who that car is, and if it's Stanley, call this lawyer or whatever. <laughs> and then at the end, you see Stanley walking out. It's a broken watermelon on his car, and it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then, uh, they, they, but they do have moments where they do address oh my God. that. <laughs> see, that's why I can't watch the show It's sometimes. so bad. Because I can't. Like, I watch it, and it's like, oh, no, I have to go. <laughs> I can feel like I'm in it's trouble. It's really awkward. But yeah. I do respect her because she was a, like, if you look at stuff, she wrote some of the episodes. Yeah. She produced some of the episodes and stuff like that. She's a very funny. She's, yeah, she's fucking hilarious. She's a hilarious comedian. She's a 40 year old virgin, too. Yeah. She's the, the girl that uh, Paul Rudd 
You remember oh, she yeah. was in the, the speed yeah. dating. I forgot her name, but he had been talking about her all the time. Then you saw her. She was like, dude, I, I blocked your email. I blocked your number. You're still calling me. You're still stalking me. <laughs> Fucking psycho. I like her voice. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I like. Uh, She's like, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know you were going to be here. <laughs> Uh, okay. Uh, basically, like what we've been talking about the whole time, the reason that The Office is such a rewatchable, sh- yeah, the reason we love The Office so much and the reason it's so re- rewatchable is because of the characters. We know these characters. We feel like we can invite these characters over for dinner. Uh, characters that are rich and, and well-developed and just you, you want to love them. Like, they're really, really lovable. And it's, it's more, like we were saying before, it's more of a show just about friendship and love and just growing as a person and being around these people and like it's just uh, I fucking love it like I can't even explain why I fucking love this show so much just everything about it is great I don't have really any complaints about except you know last season eh, you know what I mean after Michael left the show kind of went through this really weird weird lull you know but it did end up picking up and it's just a really good show I'm gonna watch this shit when I get home yeah I think I'm gonna end up watching this quite a bit today it's, um, it's just really great yeah, it's uh, so strong that it uh, has such a strong following that even now, I mean, it's 2017 now, and this show ended four years ago? Four years ago, at least. And started 12 years ago? Like, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, and um, they're, like, it's such a quotable and gifable show. <laughs> Me and Holly are soup snakes. <laughs> I mean, soulmates. I'm gonna, I'm getting that tattoo. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, we're soup snakes. I love the line, I declare <laughs> bankruptcy. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. <laughs> you can't just say it. Oh, I didn't say it. I declared it. <laughs> God, they're so good. Like, if you go on Reddit at any given day, you'll probably just see a random screenshot come out. It's just, it's so, it's so good. It's such a good it's show. Such a good show. So this has been a total love fest. Yep. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Yay. Do you have anything to plug? Uh, all my shows are out of town, which sounds like I'm bragging, which I am. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be in L.A. next October 22nd. I'll be on Baron Vaughn show. Varen Vaughn, he has a, a show, uh, New Negroes. Oh, I'll what, be on his show. What's it's, the theater? Yeah. <laughs> uh, just follow me. I am Roxy Hayes, and I'll be posting about it. Um, I'm also going to just be random cities and stuff like that. Just check out my event page. Um, make sure you check out my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash I'm Roxy Hayes, because we're getting closer and closer to the premiere of the Roxy Hayes show. I'm really excited about that. And just follow me on all your shit. Yeah. And uh, if you want to follow me on all my social meds, I'm um, probably the best at Facebook just because I don't I she really does don't not know tweet why. at all. I don't tweet and I should, <sighs> I, but waiting. I don't understand how. Ugh. Um, <laughs> just follow me at Valdivia at V A L D E E V E E A H. And that's for Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, you can also, if I know we've been plugging this for the last couple of shows, but it's Yay. this weekend I'm this so Sunday at the starting at three o'clock mm-hmm. um it's gonna be a mini anime con and slash comedy festival we're gonna have live music there by greg coat and the space cadets we're Yay. gonna have um uh live dj playing we're gonna have artists who are selling their wares the f- cosplayers we're gonna have cosplayers at a cosplay contest there's gonna be a live episode of nerd love and Woo. we're gonna talk about naruto yeah, yeah. believe it believe it <laughs> dr bio all that <laughs> shit we're gonna talk about the best and the worst we're Fucking gonna show Sakura. and Ugh. since it's a live show we're gonna show like uh screens and we're gonna have a screen behind us we're gonna show clips from the sh- uh, show it- itself we're gonna really get into it, and it's an adult show, so we're not gonna like yeah. mince words around you. There's also a bar at the rec room, so you can get I'm beer and wine. And I'm getting fucked up. Oh, I can't. I'm working. No, nah, fuck it. I'm getting fucked up. Yeah, let's do it. We're it's gonna get fucked up. It'll be Sunday. We'll it's be fine. fine. <laughs> I don't, we don't have like a job in yeah. quotes. Fuck it. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> come join us. All the proceeds co- will go to Harvey Relief and the Houston Food Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, if you'd like to know know more, go to MockingbirdNetwork.com. You'll see a link on there for MizuCon. It's uh, M I Z U C O N. Again, that's MockingbirdNetwork.com forward slash MizuCon. You can also find it on Facebook if you want to contact us in any way. Find us on our Nerd Love page. It's Facebook.com forward slash Nerd Love Pod. And uh, thank you so much. I actually, yesterday I was doing a show and a couple of people came up to me and they're like, hey, I know you from Nerd Love. Oh, and I was shit. Like, oh. We're getting famous in this bitch. Ooh, thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much. 
Um, but yeah, this is our first official show, and again, it's for charity, and we're so excited to do yeah, this. Yeah, shit's about to go down. What? It's fucking crazy. So uh, thank you so much for ev- everyone, um, and we'll see you on Sunday. Yeah, are we going to end with a song? Let's play out the theme song. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Mockingbird Network.